Understanding the f-stop scale is key to achieving correct exposure. How f-stops work, how they can be changed, and what they mean will help you create a great photo or video or film image. This video gives you all the f-stop know-how you're going to need. You'll just have to put it into practice. By the time this video is done, I'll explain to you what f-stops are and how to manipulate them so you can start to master your own skills. Hi, I'm Jim Costa. I'm a videography, photography, and technology guru, and I created this blog to help you to become a tech savvy seed. My tips and advice are useful to anyone, but my specific focus is in helping senior citizens to become more familiar with technology to improve and better their lives. If you have a camera question, leave a comment below. I do read all the comments that people leave, and yes, believe it or not, I actually do personally respond to them as well. So I'd love to hear from you. I've created many other videos on improving your photography and videography skills, and I'll link to those in the comment section below, and both during and at the end of this video as well, so stay tuned. You want to learn more? Remember to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell to be notified when I upload new videos. I upload every week and I'll be uploading more in-depth explanations of film, video, and photography topics in the future. So what is an f-stop? In photography, an f-stop is a measurement of exposure. We already know that an exposure is made from the settings making up the exposure triangle. These settings include the shutter speed, the ISO, and the aperture settings. I've actually done another video on the exposure triangle, and I'm going to link to that in the comments section below so you can brush up on that topic next. To be specific, if you were to increase the exposure by one stop, you would be doubling the exposure. Decreasing the exposure by one stop is basically halving it, cutting it in half. To break this down, think of it this way. Your camera has a mechanical aperture inside that controls how much light enters the camera and hits either your film or your CCD. This image shows this clearly. This aperture can change in size, and it works a lot like the pupil of your eye. In general, the brighter the scene, the more the pupil constricts. In low light, your pupil is very large, letting in as much light as possible so you can see at night, for example. The same goes for your camera's aperture in most situations. The important thing to know about f-stops is that the smaller the number, the more light you're letting into your CCD or film. Conversely, the larger the number, the lower the amount of light you're letting into your camera. If there's anything that messes people up with f-stops, it's this inverse relationship uh, with the aperture settings because it seems like a large number would mean a lot of light. However, it is exactly the opposite. To complicate matters a bit, changing the other elements of the exposure triangle will affect the exposure of your image. As your skills as a photographer or videographer or filmmaker improve, you will start to shoot in manual mode more often. As this happens, you gain more and more control over how the camera exposes the scene. Knowing what one stop can do for the shutter speed, ISO, and aperture will affect how you change each one. As mentioned, other factors that affect the f-stop include the ISO. One stop up from ISO 100 is 200, and one stop up from ISO 200 is 400, and so forth. The interviews aren't equal but instead the ISO doubles between stops. It's easy enough to understand, so I'll leave it at that. Next, consider the shutter speed. The majority of the time when you use your digital camera, you're shooting at a fraction of a second. If you shoot at speeds of one second or longer, the time principle as above applies. You simply double the time from one second to two, then from two seconds to four, and so forth. Very easy. When shooting at fractions of a second, such as 1 200th of a second, to double the number, you have to half the denominator, the number on the bottom of the fraction, in this case 200. So if you're new to photography, 
don't worry, this will become second nature. One one hundredth of a second is twice the length of one two hundredth of a second. So that there's one stop and the exposure is double. One fiftieth of a second is twice the length of one one hundredth of a second and so forth. Just like the f-stops listed on your lens, the smaller the number equals more light or exposure. The harder part to comprehend is the aperture. I'm afraid this is where things get a bit complicated and somewhat mathematical and you should know geometry. If you use the logic that I've explained above, you will probably assume that f2 is twice the exposure f4. Sadly, this is not the case and f2 actually allows in four times as much light as f4. You might be scratching your head at this, but I promise it will all come clear uh, in just a minute, so stick with me. The aperture scale does not take on the same principles as the shutter speed or ISO because of how the measurement is taken. Aperture is measured using something called the f-stop scale. On your camera, you see uh, printed like f slash or just f or f dash, something like that, followed by a number. The number denotes how wide the aperture is, which in turn affects the exposure and depth of field. The lower the number, the wider the aperture. This may seem confusing. Why a lower number for the maximum aperture? The answer is simple and mathematical, but first you need to know the f-stop scale. The f-stop scale is as follows. f1.4, f2, f2.8, f4, f5.6, f8, f11, f16, and f22. Before we go any further, let's recap on what the aperture is. The aperture is the hole in the lens through which light passes through. It controls both the exposure and the depth of field. We're only looking at the exposure here though. If you're changing from f2 to f2.8, you're having the exposure, you're cutting it in half. In doing so, you're having the open area of the aperture lens. The most important thing to know about these f-stop numbers is that from each number to the next, the aperture decreases to half its size, thus allowing 50% less light through the lens, or one f-stop. This is because the f-stop numbers come from an equation used to work out the size of the aperture from the focal length of the lens. This is where the math comes in. The f in f-stop or f number stands for focal length and the number is a fraction of the focal length which tells you the size of the aperture. Say for example you have a 50 millimeter lens with an aperture of f2. To find the width of the aperture, divide the 50 by 2, giving you a diameter of 25 millimeters. You then have to take the radius, which is half of the diameter, in this case 12.5, Multiply it by itself to create the radius squared, which is equal to 156.25, and multiply that by pi, 3.14, giving you a grand total number of 49.9. The whole equation kind of looks like this. The area of the opening is equal to pi times r squared, or radius squared. This isn't essential for you to know, especially if you're not good at math, but it may help you to get your head around it especially if you happen to be a math whiz, because then it would make really good sense. Okay, so that's f-stop for you. With all this new information, you should have a much better understanding of how to control your exposure. It can seem like a complicated topic, especially with the math, but once you wrap your head around it, it all becomes second nature, really, I promise. Now, if this is making sense to you, a Tech Savvy Senior in the comments section below. My question of the day is this. What trouble have you had with f-stops and how did you go about fixing it to improve your videos and film? Go ahead and leave a comment below and let us know. Do you want to see more videos like this? Follow my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films, for more. Think what you saw was great? Go ahead and like it. You have an opinion? Comment below. You know someone who could benefit from the information that I provided? Share the video. Do you want to learn even more? If so, you can connect with Jim Costa Films on social media and online on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, of course, and on the internet. I currently have over 4,200 videos on my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films, so 
feel free to check out many of my other videos for great tips and suggestions. And now, I also have a new Facebook group called Video Producers and Content Creators. So look for that on Facebook to connect with me there, join the group, and get even more pro tips and tricks. Come on. Hello. Trying to record my blog, Luke, and you have jumped in my lap, sir. You want to stay? Uh, you want attention? Right this is act second as soon as I'm working? Ay, 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 ay. You really want attention, don't you? Okay. I have to get back to work. Let's stand up so people can see you. Oh, there you are. Ooh, scratchy, scratchy. Scratch! All right, can I get back to work now, please? Please, please, can I get back to work? Do I have permission? Ah, oh, you're drooling, gross. Okay, down you go. 